Right, mixing up some more colour there. And uh, we're just carrying on looking at some tone structure. This is quite dark, this bridge. It'll only stand out when it's dark. This isn't the right colour. It needs to be more colour on it. But I'll put the tone in and you can see immediately where, what I mean by the fact that it's important to get it in fairly early on in the painting because it does give you that linkage between that dark area, it's not dark all over, and, and some dark areas. So we'll just blend that in a bit so it's not all right. And um, this dark area here, uh, which needs a bit more work on. Keep on building up the tonal structures of the greens here. Goes across here, then it sort of comes into this dark area here. That's a light area. This is sort of mid-tone. A bit more drawing here, just a, literally drawing up against the lines this time, not just scrubbing in. This is, needs a bit darker here. These reeds. These are actually quite, quite important part of the structure of the picture. Some bit more detail there. Bring that across. What have we got here? That's a bit more dark. So is that. Um, this is this is dark up here. So is that. Nice scrubbing sound. I do like that sound. It ruins your brushes, of course. Right, I've now got to look at some of the colours. I've just almost disregarded the colour. And if I look at the, the general shape of the colours, there's a sort of purpley tinge to it. This is a very subtle purple, it's a very strong colour, but I'm going to make it very, very, very weak, very thin wash of purple. And we change our brush again, because then I can do it with great sweeps. Right, we've got a purple hue across here, and we'll put it in and one across here. That's, this is the shadow. Can you see how that immediately gives me very subtle colour across the picture? We'll put some in there as well. And we'll put some on the end of here. That's very gentle. I don't think there's anything else that needs purple. That obviously, uh, I'll just go over that a bit more. Needs a bit, a bit more there. Perhaps, perhaps a bit more down here. We can change that with a bit more paint. That seemed to work okay. There's a bit here, here. No, it doesn't need any more in there. That's sort of given it a bit more colour structure to it. Now, what I must do is to get something to get my eye working to work these things out. And the way to do that is to look at how he painted the water lilies. Now, he would have done these in very quick strokes indeed, almost a sort of just dabbing on huge, pretty thick layers of colour and in this case, we're going to use, I think we use a just tiny bit of red with this white, just the tiniest bit. And we're just, and it'll give me something to put my eye on. So, so this, that, there's, there's a water lily there, and one here, daubs. Absolutely, that's all you need to do, daub. This original drawing is only there, literally only there, to give you a guide to where things ought to be started off and not necessarily a definite thing to go up against. Otherwise you're going to end up like painting by numbers, which is certainly not what this is about. Right, there's three there. I've got one, one, two, one, there's one here. One, two, there's got to be one there. This will give me a drawing line, a, 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 an eye that a drawing line where my eye can work out where things ought to be later on. That's a, that's a lily. That's a tiny one there. There's one there. One there. One there. And there's one here. And here. Right. These have got yellow water lilies on top, and these are some lilies here. We'll just put one or two dabs here. Doesn't matter where they are. Not really. 
we're not copying his exact picture. We're not going to try and do a forgery of a, of a Monet here. We're just looking at how he perhaps would have painted it. Dabs of colour, dab, 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 dab. Wonderful stuff. There we are. That just gives you a little few dots to work on. Right, we'll then use the same colour and we'll do the bridge again. There we go, over here. I'm not very good, I never have been, at freehand drawing. So I'm resting my finger on the, the canvas when I'm bringing it across. And, and that's okay when you're using acrylics, not so wonderful when you're using oils. But um, I, I do find it quite nice to, to be able to rest your finger on there. So we bring this across. That goes down in here. This is a bit green. We'll add a bit of green to this. A bit of, bit of green on this white, sort of slightly viridian and white mix here. There we go. That's quite nice. Right, I'm going to add a bit more purple to this. Same mix, bit of purple. We do, we'll carry on with this side. There we go. And since we've got this mix, we might as well have a look and see if there's anything else we can add on to these, these lilies. Let's put a one or two pads in to thicken up some of the paint. Doesn't show very much, but it, it'll be there. There's some one or two lilies here. We'll, we'll just put these in. Right. Now, as I said before, we need to work on some of the mid-tone areas. So we'll mix and mix a, a mid-tone area with a bit of cobalt blue here. With the green we mixed before. And let's just see what that looks like. That'll do. That's fine. I'm going, to, I'm going to draw this mixture, a bit more ultramarine with it, and a bit of red, calm it down. That's going to make it a bit purpley. That's plenty of it, so we need plenty of it. I'm going to draw some of these areas in. That's, oh dear, it's a bit dark. Well, it won't matter. There's a dark area there. Draw, just drawing some of the some of the structures that will split up this area here of lily pads. So it's really very, very abstract. This is almost this is just a series of daubs of paint on the canvas that Moni would have so enjoyed. They, there's no drawing. There's no nothing more than just a series of of marks that the brush makes. As, as you put on the different colours. 
And the only way to get this really working well is to paint it and paint it and paint it. And far more time would be spent on doing that than we have today. But at least we can get some idea of and the fun and enjoyment he must have, must have felt when he painted these lilies every time, in fact. He painted lilies, he must have enjoyed it so much. And we just carry on doing this kind of, there's a sort of vertical lines you put in there. We put those in. The, just draw underneath these flowers because that's where the shadow would be. Just do the shapes of some pads. Not important to know exactly where everything goes. Otherwise you'll be here all day, even with a tiny copy like this. Monet loved huge paintings. In fact, there's a lovely story about him. He, he wasn't a very tall man and he wanted to paint this massive painting and he couldn't reach the top. So he dug a hole in the garden and sunk it in and, and was able to reach the top of his picture. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it's a lovely story. Um, we'll just put some uh, upright, upright strokes there. Not, they're not even right, right colour, but it doesn't actually matter. As long as they're the right kind of tone, we can change them to be the right colour later on. There's um, the lilies, uh, rather the reeds come here, then the lilies go across there, and this that's a bit, bit mid, mid toney. So we're we won't, we'll take away some of that yellow there. There we go. All right. That brings me to about halfway through the painting. And it seems to be working quite well. So I'd like you to join me in the next program when we complete the whole picture. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.